Jeff Hobbs from Hampshire is one of my go-to people for bus knowledge. Um, I, I don't think I, I, I really. So I first met met Jeff when he was he was working at Southampton, and he is now either gamekeeper turned poacher or poacher turned gamekeeper. And I've never been able to quite work out which way round that is. <laughs> But but Jeff is is going to talk to us this morning about some of the amazing stuff that's happening in in Hampshire and potentially he says putting Jeff totally on the spot how that joins up with with the stuff that's happening in Portsmouth and Southampton. If you've got a presentation, please do share it now. I will I will shut up and turn my camera off. So the floor is yours. Brilliant. Is that okay, Andy? Can everything sound nice and big? That's perfect. Thank you. Lovely. So um. So, uh, this lovely picture here, I'm going to show you lots of beautiful pictures of buses, so I hope you like that sort of thing. Um, if you don't, well, hopefully by the end, maybe you'll like them a bit more. So this is a lovely Eclipse bus on the Eclipse busway that links Fairham and Gospel in South East Hampshire. Um, and um, this is one of the schemes that we're really proud of in Hampshire because it's a fabulous bus route. If you've not been on it, um, I'd encourage you to, to to have a have a sort of morning or afternoon out on it um it really is amazing um so uh, yeah it's a bus uh, a bus way that's several kilometers long that links the two towns and it misses out lots of congestion and uh it's a really really good rapid bus route that we're very proud of so uh yeah so what i'll cover today is a little bit about our enhanced partnership in hampshire and what we've been doing um what are local bus operators doing in terms of their, their vehicles and making them newer and shinier and even more exciting than they already are but uh, i will talk a little bit about um zebra building on erica's um uh work introduction earlier um i talk a little bit about our plans for using what we're calling b6 plus funding here in hampshire I'll talk a little bit about some of the bus priority and interchange improvements that we're doing, and then there'll be some time for, for questions again. So, uh, so in Hampshire, um, it's a big, big county. Um, it's um, probably, I think, it's the second largest county in in Shire County in in the south and southeast, um, and. Um, yeah, that's nearly two million people that live in Hampshire, um, including the two cities. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of issues and challenges that relate to transport and travel in Hampshire, and these are just some of them. So um, we need to reduce carbon dioxide emissions from from vehicles and transport. Um, we need to persuade people out of their cars because um, cars are convenient, they're quick, they're uh, you don't get wet, uh, too wet, get, getting between places. Um, and yeah, we, we we need to um, entice people out of their nice, warm, cozy cars onto buses and back to travel. So um, yeah, we're facing um, wetter winters and, and hotter, drier summers, and we need to cope with climate change. Um, and obviously, um, our roads and railway lines and cycle cycle paths are sort of the arteries that connect where people live with where they work and where they shop. So uh, we really want to help people to get around more sustainably um, because it helps everyone. It helps job seekers, it helps businesses, it helps the economy. Um, and yeah, if, if our transport, if, if our our bloodstream of transport arteries isn't working very well, then, then and there's blockages, then that means that things aren't as efficient as they should be and people don't look for jobs um, as far afield as, as they could uh, if transport's a bit quicker and a bit more reliable and yeah Hampshire we've also got an aging population and there are economic and health inequalities that we need to do something about and obviously the technological innovation um, so uh, technology is moving at a very rapid pace we've got AI we've got electric vehicles we've got all kinds of um exciting thing then obviously the breathe app and everything that we're doing to uh, encourage people to travel using breeze app um so our that transport focus are uh, a group of uh, uh, their, their organization that work across 
the UK and they uh, talk to people who use the bus uh, running surveys and they also talk to people who don't use the bus and these are some of the things that um, people who don't use the bus have said would help them to consider possibly using the bus if if things changed. So the, the annoying thing is at the bottom here, nearly half of those non-bus users say, nope, sorry, there's nothing at all that you can do that will persuade me out of my to, to, to use to use buses. So um so that's a bit disheartening for people like me whose job it is to get more people on buses, but okay uh, I, can, I can cope um so in terms of what we can do uh, to improve buses and what will make a difference that people have said more frequent services uh, better value fares and more reliable buses so the basics really of, of um delivering the timetable and getting to you getting people to where they want to go uh, reliably and on time and affordably so um yeah I find that interesting um, so our Hampshire Enhanced Partnership, um, like Portsmouth's, we um, we um, we're part of an enhanced partnership, which means that um, it's a legal agreement between us and the bus operators in Hampshire as to how we work together to make buses more reliable, faster, and better. So these are our ten priorities that we and the operators have jointly signed up to. Um, they're all quite sensible, and the whole point of doing these things is that you get this spiral of growth um, as this flow chart shows so um so if you make bus journeys better um bus operators buses and vehicles and the system runs more efficiently um that generates more passengers which helps finances the bus operators and they can use that to reinvest in the network um, and so it goes on so that's the theory um so um, in terms of what we've been doing uh, to uh, start that cycle of spiral of growth, um, we have uh, made an enhanced partnership plan and scheme um, just over 18 months ago. And like Portsmouth, we've produced a new customer charter jointly with Southampton, um, which sets out to passengers what they can expect from us and the bus operators. Uh, we've also run some radio adverts to encourage more people to, older people to uh, travel for free using the concessionary travel paths. And we've run some joint marketing work with our bus operating partners um, to um, promote bus travel and the two pound capped single fare. And I'll show you some examples of that in a minute. And um, we've also agreed with operators that will limit the number of timetable changes to either two um, timetable changes across most of Hampshire or three in the case of the Smith and South East Hampshire area. And that just helps passengers to understand that uh, so timetables will only get changed a handful of times a year and, and they can depend and rely on that, that uh, and get used to that service pattern that, that is operated. We've also developed and connect a uh, brand for our community transport and taxi share and demand responsive transport services that we'll be rolling out um, to help encourage more people to use those. And we've put together an enhanced partnership forum, which is made up of people who use buses. They can be a sounding board and they can tell us what we're doing well and what we need to improve on. Uh, we also produce an annual progress report that sets out to people how well we're getting on with delivering our enhanced partnership. And we do that in October every year. So these are some of the examples of the marketing that um, Hampshire and uh, the bus operators, Stagecoach, uh, First Solent and um, Blue Star has been doing since the summer. Uh, so we've, um, we've all got our own, um, if it's based on different demographics and different people making different types of bus journeys so some are older people some are students some are families um and it, it just has the call to action of, of download the app and, and consider traveling by bus because it's a good value in the case of uh, the cat single fare or free if you've got an old person style or if you've got a toddler who's under five they can also travel for free um and yeah we direct 
yeah, the red posters and, and things direct people to the My Journey Hampshire webpage. And we like My Journey here, don't we? Um, so when we ran the campaign, there's a sort of base level of people visiting the website. And then when the campaign start, we got, we got a lovely big spike, um, more people visiting My Journey website. So it's clearly all these posters and, and adverts and things do work and they do, um, people do click through and, and check out websites. And uh, we have seen our bus operators and um, they've they noted a similar increase in the number of people downloading their apps. So uh, uh, we're, we're really pleased with this and it just shows how effective things can be when we work together. Um, so here's our Connect Community Transport Dino Ride and um, Taxi Share Branding. Um, and here's our progress report. So some of the things we've been doing recently, um, we are working on demand and responsive transport projects, um, and we're working on route investment plans for some of the busiest bus corridors in Hampshire, uh, where we set out a costed plan of all the things we want to do on a particular bus corridor to speed up buses and make it more attractive for more people to use those services. Uh, we're also working with Transport Focus to join their um, your bus journey survey uh, starting from next year and they're working on cross-boundary bus and rail network maps with colleagues in Surrey, Southampton and Portsmouth. Uh, so uh, our bus operators are also investing in their vehicles. Um, so here are some lovely shiny new double-deck buses that Stagecoach have invested in for their 700 service between Portsmouth, Habent and Chichester. And if you really want to, you can spend two pounds and you can go all the way to Brighton for the day and visit Brighton. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, quite a bargain really from the two pound cap singles. And here's um, an example of the electric buses that uh, that will be arriving at the Hofer Depot in, uh, in um, by next uh, April. And Blue Star are investing in 24 new buses for services in Southampton and out to Fair Oak. And they'll be arriving um, between now and next break. Uh, so, yeah, operators are, yeah, because the bus fleet adventure is, is quite modern. And in a few months, time, we can use them more modern. So, uh, in terms of the Zebra stuff, uh, I won't go over what Erica said earlier, but um, um, each of um, the three authorities are also looking to further. Uh, increase the number of electric buses in the southern area and both Portsmouth, ourselves and Southampton are bidding for another round of funding which opened um, in September and closes um, just before Christmas. So um, us and the bus operators are really keen to see if we can use some of that funding if, if, if we're successful with our competitive bids to, to get more electric buses into the solar so the Bus Service Improvement Plan Plus funding that Hampshire have been awarded, um, we've been awarded £7.2 million pounds of funding. And uh, the sorts of things we're going to do with that, I'll show you in a minute. Um, but we have uh, just under two years to spend it. As we've talked quite carefully with our bus operator partners, the what uh, service enhancements they would like to deliver us and we're working through with them the detail of how we can uh, enhance service frequencies and start buses earlier in the morning and finish them later at night because um, that will help people to get to work and get about their daily business more easily without relying on the car. Uh, so these are some of the themes of things we would like to do with our basic plus funding. Um, so, uh, Quite, quite a, an exciting list there. Um, I won't go through them in detail, but um, about all things that will achieve those ambitions of speeding up bus services, making them more reliable, and um, yeah, making the like, meeting environments better too, because uh, that is all part of the customer bus user experience. Um, so just to finish then, these are some of the uh, bus infrastructure projects that we've delivered recently in Hampshire. So, um, uh, we've, um, in, in places like the New Forest, we've, uh, tidied up some of our bus stops 
so that um, instead of having lots of poles and posts and signs near a bus stop, we've put everything on one post and and it's all neat and tidy and um, people can then scan a QR code to find out the next bus uh, coming along to that stop and um, everything's quite clear and quite well laid out. Uh, this is a, uh, a new uh, bus lane um, in the um, in the area that's used uh, between Havant and Cosham, um, and yeah, this was funded from the Transforming Cities Fund project, where we're partnering with Portsmouth um, to deliver a new bus lane to help buses get through congestion. So normally in the rush hour, there'd be queues of cars at this location, and buses can bypass the queues and save a few minutes off each journey. This is another bus lane we've recently opened in North Camp up in Farnborough and it's the same sort of idea. It can help buses get through. Hello, hey. Hello, how are you? Uh, and this is a uh, construction site. Exciting, isn't it? Um, so this is um, Gosport bus station. So at the moment, uh, we're building a new, uh, a new taxi drop-off pickup area and just further to the north of this, we're building, we'll be building a new bus interchange um, at the hard, at the, at the Gospel Ferry Terminal. Um, so that will be, uh, again, that's funded from the Portsmouth CCF project and will mean just um, the passengers will have a much more comfortable modern waiting environment than the current Gospel bus station, which is a little bit tired and uh, past the end of its operational life, really. Um, now in the waterside area and the Plotten area, we've got a few other schemes that we're working on as part of the Southampton Transforming Cities Fund project. So on the Marchwood Bypass, uh, we'll be putting in a new contraflow bus lane that, that allows buses to um, go to the Rushington roundabout um, from the A326. And that will help speed up bus journey times for um, the Blue Star routes to from the water side um and that uh, is going to be being constructed those are the next few months um, and will be quite a significant investment in that area um and then nearer the rushington roundabout there'll be a new section of bus lane um on the approach to the rushington roundabout that will help uh, buses to get to the front of the traffic queues and carry on on their journey much quicker so um yeah, we're looking forward to seeing um, faster bus journeys to and from uh, Marchwood and Hive and Borley into Southampton. Um, so if um, you do want to email and have pick up conversations um, at a future date, we've got our hampshire.bus.strategy email address there. So if you email your question or query to me or well, to us, then we monitor that shared inbox and we'll we'll get back to you and we'll um, work on whatever it is that you want to raise. If you want to visit our bus strategy web pages, then that's the um, URL there. So um, yeah, I'll stop there and over to the floor for the question. Thank you very much for that. There was there was a lot of content in that. That, that that you managed to cover an awful lot of stuff in not very much time. I am, I am genuinely impressed. We have had a bunch of questions from the floor. Um, one that's coming from me is you talked about timetable changes and how they're only going to be two or potentially three times a year. Do you have dates for those so that people know when to expect those timetable changes? So very <laughs> approximately. Yeah. Um, the easy one is September in all parts of Hampshire. Yeah. Um, and there is a kind of window between mid-February and April or the other time of year. There are, so that's the simple answer. Cool. Um, do, do, do. We've also had a question about season tickets and whether they are still going to be offering season tickets, particularly annual season tickets with the um, the current fare cap. Do you know how they are going to play with each other? So uh, the depend on the single fare cap um, isn't always the cheapest product. It, it is quite good for people who are just making one return journey a day um, or who are traveling infrequently. 
so regular bus traveler might find that um a weekly season ticket or another product like a carnet ticket where you can travel you get five return journeys for a certain price uh i think steven's got his hand up <laughs> he, he knows this much better than i do um yep. for, from a blue star perspective so yep. yeah there, there's there's lots of different ticket products that are aimed at different types of bus users so um they're sometimes the two pound cap fare is cheaper and sometimes it is not um but if you were a, a user of a bus that has tap on tap off it can work all that out very cleverly for you and if you tap in and tap out whether you're a frequent bus user or an infrequent bus user then the back office clever app system can make sure you pay the cheapest fare for the journey that you make so if there is tap on tap off then that makes it super easy and always can guarantee you're getting the lowest price there. But I'm sure sort of Stephen would have put it much more eloquently. I, I, I am <laughs> just about to say, Steve, would you like to add anything to that? My non related namesake said it before me. You beat me to it. I think well, there's a lot of <laughs> on tap off. Um, there you go. <laughs> How are you doing, Jeff? <laughs> Very well, Steve. Good to, good to talk to you. And you, mate. Super. Thank you very much. For those who don't know, St Steve Hobbs is is from is from Blue Star and is an absolute expert in all things, particularly around financial back office on buses, which terrifies the bejesus out of me. It's 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 far too complicated for me to cope with. Um, on those bus corridors, now you you said you're you're improving a number of those, and you talked about um the the Marchwood corridor and into and into Totten. What are the other corridors? I mean, in Hampshire as a whole, that that you are looking at improving. Does that mean I'm allowed to talk about the area beyond the Salem and Winchester? <laughs> yes, please, please do. <laughs> okay. I mean, this this, this yeah. you are absolutely free to do that. Yeah. So we have about. Um, 15 or 16 what we call flagship bus corridors in Hampshire that have um, very good service frequencies that have good passenger numbers and lots of trip attractors along the routes. Um, they serve a number of employment areas and we think they've got really good growth potential to get that cycle of growth that I was talking about earlier. So what we want to do um, is work in partnership with our bus operator partners as through the enhanced partnership to agree with them jointly these corridor investment plans. So in if we say for bus infrastructure we want to speed up buses by putting in a bus lane between point A and point B, um, we want to improve the bus shelters along the route on this route and put real time information screens in for passengers. Um then we cost all that up. We can say it costs uh, X hundred thousand or X million to, to do that whole corridor. And in return, the bus operators will say, well, if you can guarantee you can speed up buses end to end by five minutes on that route, then we can reinvest that vehicle in increasing the frequency on that bus route. Or we can um, run extra early morning services or extra evening services for shift workers or people who work in hospitality, then great. Um, that's the sort of spirited partnership of those. So there's some in between Farnborough and Aldershot, there's several in Basingstoke, there's a, flag, a few flagship routes in Winchester, there's um, the Star Corridor between uh, Glenfield, Waterloo, and Portsmouth in the southeast, there's the X4, X5 route between um, between Southampton and Crossport or Portsmouth by Fairham, and then there's the Eclipse Corridor, of course, that's another flagship route. Um, and then there's other services like in Blue Star One that connects Winchester and, and uh, Southampton for all those lovely people who live in Chandler's Ford. Um, and yeah, uh, the Blue Star Two service out to Fair Oak for all those amazing people who live in Bishop's Oak and Fair Oak. Um, and yeah, and if, if we work in partnerships with operators to jointly agree what improvements are needed on these corridors, then we can, we can use funding that we might have from a range of different sources to start to implement some of these improvements to make buses faster and more reliable and easier to use. Excellent. I've got one last one, and this does, I'm afraid, come with a controversy warning from the floor. Um, so Trevor has been using the buses a lot more since, since, the t t since the fair cap, which is a good thing, but he has noticed that a number of those buses are not particularly full. 
So there's a two part question here. Firstly is, um, do you have data on occupancy on the buses? And if so, where can people find it? So that's your first question. I'll let you have feel that one first because that's the easier one. The uh, bus operators do collect passenger information on numbers of passengers that are using services. Um, so bus services across most of Hampshire, are, most of them are run commercially by um, private sector bus operators like um, Blue Star and uh, First Solent and Stagecoach. So because they are commercial companies, um, the number of passengers that use those buses is something that is uh, a matter for each private bus operator to decide if they want to make that public or not. Um, but um, through as part of inside that tent of partnership working, um, they the, the three bus operators do share with us um, progress on the number of bums on seats, so we can monitor how effective things have been um, and what we will start to publish in our annual progress reports in the future is an index that shows uh, if a 2022 equals 100 then hopefully 2023 equals 100 plus and combust and and then that way and then we can put that in the public domain in a way that that helps people um like mike to understand um how many uh, sorry trevor how many people are, are using buses in aggregate across Roots in Hampshire. Excellent. Now for the controversial question, mm-hmm. and that is, at what level of occupancy is it more sustainable to offer fewer services that are well used over f- more frequent ones that are less well occupied? And 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 essentially a little bit in how you make those decisions about frequency versus sustainability of individual trips. Uh-huh. So, um, my namesake, Steve, might be a better place to answer this than me, but I'll have a go. Um, so, um, obviously, each to run a bus service, there's various different fixed costs. So, you need a driver, you need a bus, you need a bus that has fuel in it, uh, and you need uh, you need that bus to be serviced and you need it to be insured and taxed and that sort of thing. So, once you've got all of those things, you can run a bus. Um, so um, that is your sort of fixed cost, well, fixed and variable costs, uh, and then operators can work out what what their vehicle requirement is to run a service between point A and point B. You might need three buses if it's a short route, yeah. or ten buses if it's a if it's a long route, or if it's a very frequent route, and then then you can you can basically work out at what point how many passengers do I need to make it cover the cost of adding an, an extra bus on and then bumping up the frequency from one bus every um every 20 minutes to a bus every 15 minutes so that's the simple answer as to how operators make those judgment call would i be right in thinking that in terms of sustainability and carbon footprint they, it, it is roughly the same equation but with different numbers in i um i don't want to Take a stat and raise trivial pursuit the shoot quiz, but uh, 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 a double decker bus can take 70 or so single occupancy cars yep. off the road. So um, instead of 70 cars sat at a set of traffic lights um, emitting emissions, then uh, if all of those people got on a bus, then that's an awful massive drop in the number of emission, tailpipe emissions for those people. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. Um, so really good graphic. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, yeah, but obviously, um, electric vehicle aren't completely zero carbon. There's still particulate matter from tire wear and all that sort of thing. And there's the, what type of power source electricity generation at the other end generated that so if it's from wind farms or solar farms. Great. Uh, then it is very sustainable. Um, but yeah. When, when we do bids for electric buses, we've got to make a lot of these um, assessments of, of kilometres operated per bus, that sort of thing, and do, do a lot of math, which is fun. As someone once said to me, anything to do with sustainability is more complicated than that, no matter how complicated you think it is. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Jeff.
we are going to let you off the hook. Thank you for coming out today. It's really good to see you. Uh, there was loads of quality content in there. And we will see you again soon.